Good morning, everybody. You're listening to Table for Two with Naomi Nachman on the Nachum Siegel Network. Our show is sponsored by Abel's and Hyman. For, we taste better. Almost forgot our little punchline there. For those of you who don't know me, I am Naomi Nachman, and I'm about all the food, all the time. For those who don't uh, know me, um, sorry, I said that. I love food. I love to shop for it, cook it, eat it, eat at restaurants, anything food related. I'm a kosher personal chef, and my business is called the Aussie Gourmet. I give cooking classes, I cater for people for Shabbos, Yontov, will travel anywhere in the world to cook a meal for you. Um, so I'm having a lot of fun doing that right now, especially right before Yontov. Um, so tune every, in every week and hear about my cooking adventures, my kosher food traveling, sharing of great food ideas and recipes, but I want to hear about your experiences too. So drop me a line, Naomi at NachumSiegel.com. You can join my Facebook page, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, my newsletter, my, my website, theaussiegourmet.com. Anytime you eat something or you made something, share it with me. I'd love to hear about it so I can make it too. So, you know, we'll make this a, a, a partnership between me and you. Um, I just want to share this from Cole Foods. Cole Foods, spelled K-O-L, puts the glut kosher meat and ethics on the same plate. Cole Foods makes sure its meat is within harmony, nature, and tradition all the way from farm to fork. The beef and lamb are 100% grass-fed and grass-finished, and none of their in animals are injected with hormones. And the results are both humane and delicious. Try the lamb chops or duck breasts, and I'm sure you will agree. Use the coupon Naomi to receive 5% off the entire order through September 22nd. For more information, go to coalfoods.com. So I am very excited that I'm a coupon for Cold Foods. Yay. <laughs> I'm a coupon code this week. Very exciting. Um, we have an amazing show. It is uh, a couple of days before Rosh Hashanah. Everyone's in the frantic mode, uh, getting everything done. And it's been extremely busy for me, cooking, cooking, cooking away. So um, I have two amazing guests in my show, and I just want to get straight down to Tachlis. Um, I have in the, in the studio today, Jay Booksbaum. Marketing Director of Royal Wines, and he does so much more than just wine wine sharing and wine pairing um, across the world with everybody, educating us on what to drink and what to eat with it and all that. And and I have uh, Naomi Ross. I don't even know how to describe Naomi besides a really amazing friend, and she's always been there. We've always been there for each other. Um, you know, she's Naomi, I'm Naomi. We both love to cook and cook for other people. And we're always... Naomi the, Squared. Naomi Squared. In the studio. <laughs> so... Uh, Thank you very much for joining me, both of you, today. Um, what an exciting show. Um, I have presents to give out to you guys. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so I had Ooh. made up from OK Uniforms. They're actually right here on the Lurie side. Table for two aprons. Actually, I awesome. saw Miriam Wallet. Brenda's going to love it. Ha hung, hung ours up. Uh, hang Ooh, one up on the office wall. But can we see this? You see it says table for two. Uh, a little bit more to the side. We got it in, the whole thing. Table for two with Naomi Nachman on the Nachum Siegel Network. Um, I just cool. want to give it awesome. to my guests. Thank okay, you. uniforms, give them a shout out for uh, making them up for Thank us. You. So one for you, Jay. Thank you. And Thank one you for so you, much. Naomi. Thank so you. either you or Brenda will stay, I wear it? stay clean. You could wear it as you pour red wine over your <laughs> sort of white shirt. And you could wash these things. Right? Oh, absolutely. And and Naomi, while you're cooking away for Yontif, you'll... Anything, it's white, anything I can bleach... Great. <laughs> is, is a, a Everything yeah. I own is oil stained at this point. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I cook in a lot of black t-shirts as well. I have like maybe 20 black gap. Those, um, it's called a favorite tee. They go to the wrist, you know, they're long sleeve ones. And I just wear them when I cook and I've ruined every single one. So I thought it was time for aprons. And I thought while I'm making aprons up, I'm going to make some for. See, um, what, I, what I really need is like a hazmat suit to cook in. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have my apron on and, and I get it right here. Right, right, so, yeah, you need a hazmat suit. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all about the fun in the kitchen. And so we're going to talk a lot today about Rosh Hashanah because it's not just about, you know, it used to be when I grew up in Australia, and I know other people did the whole Simanim thing, but it was it was kind of new to me, um, except in the last few years, I, you know, was catching on more and more. It used to be growing up apples and honey and challah and honey, and there would be a fish head on the table. But I think with the explosion of social media and the blogs and emails and this and that, and pictures that everyone's posting, um, that we're sharing more great food ideas either here on Nachum Siegel Network or between each other through your own communication. And we're learning more and more. And we get, we're getting better and better at what we do. And we're learning more about all the different simanim, all the different cultures, Jewish cultures of eating are coming together. And I know it was very popular amongst the Sephardim to do um, 
the Simanim, but it's not so much in the Ashkenazic, and now it's just getting more and more out there. And also crafting. Crafting is so popular. Um, we've had Abby Wallen from, um, you know, she has her J Create uh, magazine online, and she has her store, Not Too Shabby, which makes amazing products, um, you know, handcrafted stuff that um, you can buy for Rosh Hashanah, so you can check out uh, Abby's Facebook page, uh, Not that, Too Shabby. Is that like food crafting? No, or is food it? crafting. It's it's um, how to decorate your table. Oh, I see. So not only okay. do you want a beautiful plate of chicken and um, standing rib roast with pomegranate sauce, you want it served on beautiful platters or beautiful honey dishes or labeled individual honey dishes so the honey's not dribbling all over the table. Everybody gets their own mini one. Cool. So just different ideas. So, you know, Naomi's got to be talking to us about that as well. So uh, welcome, Naomi, and welcome, Jay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank okay. you very much. So let's start off with Naomi. We're going to talk to you about the, one of the first simanim. What have you got? She's got this whole little chart. Going. <laughs> and Jay's going to pair everything you talk about with some alcohol. <laughs> and Naomi is the designated driver. <laughs> she is going to drive me and her back to Woodmere. <laughs> um, well, first of all, it's great to be here. And Thank you again for coming in. It's very exciting for me to... Um, to enter into the holiday season because I, I feel like there's so much, um, not just that we do for in our homes, but also that we can give over to our kids that sort of create a taste for them of what all of the Chagim are about. Um, and the Simanim are not just fun for them to do, but it's like an edible association with all of these, with all of these ideas. Because we're all about eating in our religion. Yeah, pretty, everything's pretty, an pretty edible much. association. Maybe not Yom Kippur, but yeah. Pretty much. So, um, and I, the, you know, it's funny because perhaps in the past, um, I say I would say within the last 10 years, the Simanim have really like taken on, you know. Exploded. Exploded, as you would say. But certainly it's not a new idea because the Gemara talks about it. And that's where all of these Simanim come from. Um, the, the, in the Gemara, it, it talks about, um, Abaye says basically that it's um, a, a very important and um, like meritorious kind of thing to, to do these simanim. And why? Because not because necessarily that each one that it mentions actually, um, it, it's not like a hocus pocus <laughs> kind of thing, but it's really a play on words. Um, right. Okay. It's all about the play. It's all, it's all about a play on words. So like, um, you know, Gezer is, 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 is a carrot, right? But it sounds like Gazar, like a, um, a judgment. Okay. Right. So, um, so basically, all of the simanim are plays on words, and, and it's it's supposed to be a remez. A remez is a hint. So they're supposed to be like good omens, basically, that we're hinting to Hashem. to Hashem that you know this is the day of judgment, and would you mind, you know, I'm just just giving you a little suggestion, a little hint, please. We could use all of this help in in you know peace for this and you know winning over our, our enemies here and all of these nice things that we're hoping and wishing for. The simanim are pretty much our way of saying, um, please, you know, if, in a gentle way, if you don't mind, we're, we're giving you a, a little hint that we would really like these things. Um, I just want to yeah. stick one Absolutely. plug in here Absolutely. for Williamsburg. This Williamsburg. is where I grow up. I oh, okay. Grew up. Right over the bridge. And I have to tell you that, you know, it's so interesting that the Gemara talks about it in terms of the play on words. But there's a whole Yiddish thing. Yes. A play on words. Well, it's actually. And I hope you're going to talk yeah, about it, that too. It, the, the carrots actually yeah, specifically. Exactly. Yes. Carrots. Is, that's why I mention it. Yeah. And so I speak Yiddish fluently, even though I, you know, grew up in a young Israel. But yet, being on the street in Williamsburg, you got to speak Yiddish, yeah. or otherwise you're not you're not going to get a glass of milk. So, <laughs> so uh, no, there, you know, there, there's a whole there, bunch there, of there, great there, stuff there, in there Yiddish too, is. and in English too. There, there is, and people even recently and in modern times have added their own little. Did you know about the lettuce thing? Oh, lettuce. Yeah. yeah. Lettuce <laughs> have a raisin celery, you well, know. I actually, I <laughs> heard it as a raisin, raisin with celery. Right. A raisin celery. Let us have a raisin, raisin celery. celery. Right. Exactly. Yeah, there's some very right. cute ones. I actually picked up this and book last fine. year. And that's fine. I think, you know, it's not just because the Gemara points out that it's play on words. So you could use your own words, too. I mean, so, I mean figure it out. You know, it's, it could it's, be fun it's, just doing yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly, these are not halachos. These are basically... a Oh, it's coming at a time on your on Rosh Hashanah, right? If you look in the Machzor, which is you know it has all of the davening in the Machzor for specific to Rosh Hashanah, there's no mention of any of these things 
in the in the right, maqsa, right? Right. right. I, I, what, what is in the maqsa? What are we davening for? What is all of the prayers for on Rosh Hashanah? It's all about crowning God as our king. It's all about kingship, right? We're, we yes. are establishing malchus, that, that God is the king of everything, right? And so, really, the reason that, why, I mean, it's not like we have to hint to God, like he knows what we're asking for. Why can't we just come right and say it? Like, why can't we just ask for what we want? And the reason is because that's not what the day is about. The day is not about our own personal desires. It's really about us establishing God as king. And so within that, as a context, we do it in a gentle way that we come and we say, you know, basically, we, we're, uh, we understand now you're our king. And because we understand you're our king, so we understand that it's only from you that all of our desires and all of our wishes are going to be fulfilled. So only within that context can we come, and the reason it's done in a sort of roundabout kind of way with, with these omens, simanim, however you want to call them, is because it's not the main focal point of the day. The main right, is right. the davening and the establishment right. of the malchut. Basically, yeah. Beautiful. So that, that's the idea. So um, as I could not have said this. That's why I needed Naomi, <laughs> because she's so wise. She's like my Rebbitson. Oh, um, no. She's just very insightful. She has a deep understanding of just well, Yahadot and well, Halachot. What, what, what I try to do, and I just and what I, think I couldn't have done this without what, you. What I try to do and what I think everyone is really looking for is to find meaning in not just the foods we're, we're preparing, but in it. It's not just about the eating, but it's to find meaning in what we're doing, to find meaning even in the foods that we're eating. And the simanim give us a great opportunity for that because, right. you know, you, you can... And what I like to do very much is infuse the whole meal with the simanim. Right. And, and try Fantastic. to and, and try to make it um, all part and parcel of the experience. In my house, I, I started doing something called um, uh, simanim tapas. Oh, okay. that is so cute. That is cool. Okay, so, you heard it here first <laughs> from Naomi really Ross cool. right here on Table for Two on the Nachum let's, Siegel Network. Let's open up a whole restaurant at Simon Tapas. Simon Tapas. Tapas. I love that. Uh, so so it's, it started, I started Whoa. doing it a few, a few years it's, ago. Explain what Tapas are to oh, people sorry. who are listening okay. and, and do not know. Okay, so Tapas. Maybe you can also watch us, YouTube, Nachum Siegel Net. Tapas are traditionally like a Spanish way of serving like little dishes, like little it's a appetizer little, plates. Yeah, li I little, love appetizers at apps, restaurants. Little apps, little starters. Um, what I found was when I first started doing this for Rosh Hashanah, I was just putting out a plate of the simanim, right? Just like raw carrots, some beets, whatever it was, all on the plate, and I passed them around. By the time we finished our challah and honey and the simanim, full. like we were pretty full. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? There's a nicer and a more special way of doing this. And basically, I've just tried to incorporate all of the different elements, all the simanim, into the different dishes that we're serving. And as we're eating them at the table, we make our yihiratzons, like we, we oh, make our little blessings. And basically, I incorporate it into all the dishes. And so what ended up happening is that our Rosh Hashanah meal, the main course is actually very small. Most, most of the meal is all the the tapas that basically I put out. I love that. And we fill up I want to know how you get the, he the, the goat's head to... <laughs> <laughs> sheep's head. Sheep's okay, so... <laughs> so we don't actually do the sheep's head. The sheep's um, head, excuse me. Uh, right. At the table, but we do a fish head. We do... Okay, do so... How do you get the kids eat the fish okay, head? So or the kids, eyes, for that My matter. kids Whole thing about eating eyes, I don't know. My, my mom loves the salmon head. I cannot... My husband cannot look at any whole animals. No Cornish hens, no spatchcocks, people, people no really, whole fish. The meat of the, the uh, fish head is actually pretty they, good. My mother yeah. said it's delicious. Yeah, it's got a lot of so, flavor. Yeah. So, so what I do actually is, you know the jujus, J-U-J-U? -J -U, it's mm -hmm. a little the, gummy the fish. Gummy fish. I yeah. cut the heads off and I have a little bowl <laughs> of fish heads. And you know what? It's a head. <laughs> or people do chocolate molds of fish. You can get That's um, right. And they just cut the heads off and use that. I, I make right. – everyone. No, the I mean, I think it's the Mishnah Brewer actually talks about using a, uh, a head of a – of a, what a, sh a sheep. A sheep, yeah. No, yeah. But people, yeah, but people, people, yeah, people not so easy do. to get. People do get fish heads and sheep heads, but since my family is not yeah, exactly Yeah, no, no, not in my it, house. Ooh. So, um, but all, like all of these things, it's, again, to not only ask Hashem for what we're looking for as a people, but also to the other part of it, which I didn't mention, is to sort of reawaken in us an understanding. It's not like God doesn't know what we're looking for, right? Right. But it's for our own knowledge, right, that basically... When we realize that we've crowned God as king and we have that understanding, it's actually a pathway towards Teshuvah on Yom Kippur.
because we realize, well, if we realize that God is king and that we have to be beholden that everything in our life, all the blessings that we're looking for are really from him, then that means that that impacts something, how I live my life. That impacts. This lady's giving me the chills. I'm Isn't she amazing? She's amazing. That's why I knew <laughs> you guys would be appreciating so, each other. So, it's really yeah, important. So, no, this so is it's, good inspirational so, stuff. So man. it's part of the process of doing this. I mean, see, my name helps engender that within us, right? That we re- re- realize where our, our blessings are coming and from. And it's so good for the kids, you know, whether you have children or grandchildren or, God willing, great-grandchildren at your table this is an incredible... My kids get very into it. So We but, just started doing this. I'm telling you, so it's only going to be our second year. My kids cannot they, wait. They get really into it. And, and they're big. Because I, for, you know, a, a lot of my kids are starting to get a little bit bigger and being able to help more. Right. But for a bunch of years, when I had a lot of little kids, I, I needed to keep them busy on Airbnb. <laughs> you make and, the date muffins. And, you know, I have... And so I, I started creating, basically, I would... I would sort of coordinate with, with my husband or my mother-in-law or whoever was around on Erev and I'd say, okay, this is the, the craft project. This is what they're going to be doing while I'm cooking in the kitchen. Right. And I would set them up, nothing too complicated, but basically something to get them into it so that they could feel like they contributed to something really cool and creative for the table and at the same time be out of the kitchen right. <laughs> and let me cook. And that's where a lot of the craft ideas I'm going to show you came from. Okay, just, great. You know, I, we mentioned it briefly. I gave a big shout out to the Yiddish part of it. Yeah. And we also did Let Us Have a Raise, which is the English part of it. <laughs> but I have to tell you, and we did mention this briefly, the Sephardim, and my daughter, thank God, is married to the most wonderful Sephardi, oh, yay. Uh, Yehuda Alkabetz. And um, the Sephardim actually have what they, I think they call it a Seder. Yeah, yeah, I actually have this book. They I actually have a the Seder, this and they a have book. a whole, like, real, you know, this is a book. well formulated. And so I'm so I'm so glad that yeah. my daughter is getting a, a chance and to your see children, that. And your children, your grandchildren. Yeah, yeah, this special. book Wonderful. is a simanim, um, a, a book on the simanim, and it's actually called. Shout out for really getting us going. The, the, I, I have a lot of, I, I'm a little bit of Sephardi <laughs> we, we keep interrupting Sorry. you. We keep it's okay. It's your show, but we keep No, no, that's okay, because that's why I have you here, because you're educating us all. I just want to say. You can buy this book, Apples and Pomegranate, from Judaica Plus or your local Judaica store. Um, it's it's actually a book. I just had to interject there because <laughs> it's actually a this, book on the Seder. This is a very um, nice has one. stories, and we actually go through it, and everybody reads a bit. Mamish like a Pesach Seder. <laughs> it just it, it takes about half an hour to do. Depends on how much everyone's got what to say. As long as you eat your uh, pomegranate before midnight, before yeah, right, or something. <laughs> you're okay yeah, then, right? Kidding. But it has all the hiratsons and little word plays. Has a little oh, circle wonderful. of word plays in it, and it really, I found it really, really helpful. That's it's very, very special. simple. Um, yeah. So okay, I said um, it. While, while we were mentioning good books to own or use as resources, maybe we should start pouring some wine. Right. Sure. Um, I actually found uh, you, you. You said it came out yeah. last year. Um, I actually just bought it this year, but there's Let another me hold that one. Up. Here. For those of you who are watching, but yeah. Very much along the same lines as, um, as Is that I was on this shot? talking about before. This book actually does a great job of s- synthesizing very nice ideas about the Simanim w- with recipes. So it is a cookbook, but also like some very nice roasted ideas. beets, chips, and leek, and mushrooms. All, like leeks and beets are all part of the Simanim. Carrots, it's, just it's nice, great. nice ideas also. I, I've, yeah. I've got this book as well. I bought it at the same time at Judaica yeah. Plus. So um, you can have that. Okay. So um, let's actually do a little bit of a, you know, a mini Seder here. So what would be the first of the Simanim that we would do? And Jay is going to pour us some delicious something well, you know, wine. He's opening up over there. New Year, new wines. Beautiful. There's, what have you got for us? There's more than – I, I just went through the list. There's something like upwards of – certainly upwards of 50. I think it's it's – approaching 80 new wines, somewhere between 60 and 80 new wines that are available this year. Through uh, Royal Wines. Through Royal Wines. And and one of them is this new pink Pinot Grigio. Mm. And I actually have four rosés here. I have the Dolev, uh, which is a red Moscato. You've you bought in a Dolev before, right? Yes. I remember. But not not the Dolev red Moscato. This is brand new. Right. I like that. I like okay. that. <laughs> and um, I've got a, a Mucca series, uh, Naburia Vineyard. Uh, rosé. Where is that also. from? This is from Eretz Yisrael. Amuka. Amuka. Oh, right. from, or- <laughs> from Oregon News. From Oregon News. And then finally I have, for the dry wine drinker, a really magnificent Goose Bay. Goose Bay. Pinot Noir wanna, wanna Blanc. Southern so Hemisphere. So, New Zealand wine. So the, the reason I, I opened up the Pinot uh, 
the and Pinot Grigio. Is that dessert wines I see down there? Very excited and for there's that. And some dessert wines too. And listen, make sure look at drink. this. Just, just an interesting little etro liqueur. You know, that makes a lovely gift. Yeah. If you're going somewhere, we talk about being a perfect guest and a perfect hostess. You want to be the perfect guest as well. Bring a bottle of wine when you're going out to eat or offer to make a nice side dish or something. But it would be really nice. Also, it's you nice about... You can also do a nice theme gift with that. If you do something estrog, you could do like estrog wine with some kind of citru- citrus dessert. Or I know, like that. And, like and that. you know, Baruch Hashem, Excellent. these yeah. days, uh, Rosh Hashanah evenings are becoming... Like a Seder sometimes. Lots of people are sharing, you know, yeah. evenings together, if not the first night, the second night, you know. And so they can bring a nice bottle of wine uh, sure. with, you know, something interesting. And what I like about, and the reason I chose some of these wines specifically, I have almost 30 wines with me today. We're not going to get to them all, but is so because... I will definitely not make it home. <laughs> <laughs> we might both have to take it. Is that, is that I, I, I tried okay. in the rosés, no, drink. In the rosés, we tried. I tried to pick wines that are universally delicious, so that they're well made, even though they're slightly sweet. So even the dry wine drinker, especially during the course of the tapas portion of the of the meal, I like he caught on to that. Yeah, I really he's loving that. that. I'm loving that. Uh, you know, everybody, you know, from the dry wine drinker to the you know sweet wine drinker can enjoy it. So it's a little off dry. So here's one that's this this rosé is a Pinot Noir, okay. uh, which is a red grape, but it makes um, makes a pink wine it can if you leave it on the skins for just a little bit and a pinot grigio pink pinot grigio which is what they add pinot grigio is a white grape but they add a little bit red wine to it to make it a little pink and it's a little off off dry off both dry. of them i love that term i learned that from you recently off dry, off dry. I, I never I'd heard that yeah term. yeah um, the reason we say that is just it's the politically more correct way to say semi-sweet because you know every everybody no, is off dry semi-dry yeah everybody wants to think that they're a dry wine well, drinker. No, we're you know, okay. They're really a real wine drinker. Okay. So let's try the Pinot Grigio. Everyone here is over 21, right? Damn. Okay. In Australia, it's uh, you go. drinking age is 18. Okay. Everyone's going to pour themselves a little. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry. And I have promised you I've not had a drink yet. <laughs> okay. So everybody, you know, actually you have to do the five S's. Okay. First what's S, the, f- the S of sight. So it's a rosé colored. It's clear. It's clean. Mm. Doesn't have anything floating around in it. Thank God. The next is the S of swirl. I know we're drinking now, of course, out of plastic. You got to bring those better <laughs> glasses. I next apologize, time. Jay. You know, Jay. Last time he was on the show um, in the studio, yeah, and then in the also studio. in Gomez, oh, right. he bought me a case of the glasses from the uh, Kosher Food and Wine Show, and I took them home to wash, and I forgot to bring them back today. So I'm really sorry. So we're okay. drinking out of plastic cups. Okay, so you, you swirl so that you can swirl. go to the next S which is the S of smell, so you put your nice little Jewish noses in there. And you want to you look for what's, what's pleasant in the, mm. in the aromatics, you know. And here you've My got... My glands are going. Very fruity. <laughs> very yeah, very fruity. And then you do the fourth S, which is the S of savor, which I'll show you how that... You can see me on this, right? Okay. Okay, we, okay you, you can watch us as well as listening to us if you go to... Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to well, do something that might look rude, but it really isn't, because I'm not going to make a bracha, so I'm going to spit this out. But what you do is you... In, you uh, involve your entire tongue. Okay. We have, can we gargle? He's having a swish. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so not doing that. <laughs> I'm so not doing that. And the reason for I'm that is... I'm going to drink it. Kaddish Baruch Hu is so good to us. Yes. Different parts of the tongue, we call it the palate, but it's really not the palate. It's really the tongue when you call palates, palates in wine speak. Different parts of the tongue have different shaped taste buds. We've talked about this before. Yep. So sweet, sweet taste buds can only detect sweetness on the tip, and bitter ones can only detect it on the sides. But you want all of those flavors together, so you want to involve your entire tongue. And that's what I just did, and go right ahead. Okay, l'chaim. That's the fourth S. Can I say Shana Tova to everyone? Shana Tova. Shana tova. Shana tova. Make sure you make a bracha. DK. Yeah, we haven't had uh, wine yet, Naomi, yeah. Jay. L'chaim. Okay, down the hatch, okay. Oh, we have to make a bracha. We have to make a bracha. Amen. 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 And then the the last S is the S of swallow or spit. I did the spitting. You guys are doing the we're swallowing. We're going to swallow because we're ladies. And you want to <laughs> see how long that lasts. And is the aftertaste a pleasant aftertaste? This one really has a very pleasant aftertaste. This is lovely. Sometimes, and it lasts a long time. Yes. It just keeps going. And my glands are actually, like right. are going. Yeah. Right? Yeah, really. Yeah. 
And I don't want to be impolite here, but it's but like it's still it's a light, very, secreting. It's very light and fruity. Right? This is lovely. And I would imagine, Jay, this would be delicious cold. Ah, oh, yeah, it's not. We didn't chill at this time. Yeah, but it's You're still right. it should fantastic. Be. Should rosés in general in these three yes, wines you've got? Yes, they should be chilled. They should be chilled. So this is what we drank now was the pink Pinot Grigio, Baron Herzog. Okay, we got that. Absolutely delicious. And the Goose Bay, I'll give you another I'm going to try and take a picture of these if we remember and post them on the Instagram page on at, uh, at Naomi Nachman. That, that way. I don't know what was what. <laughs> is this the new one? Yeah, that's the new okay, one. Okay, where's your glass? There you go. I really like the Goose Bay wines, so. Yeah, hey, I'm a Goose Bay. Oh, you get a clean cup. Yeah, okay, yeah. we just have, we have to make a collection of dirty cups. And what I like about these rosés, especially mm. this one particularly, is that can, this can go with a wide, wide variety. It doesn't have to be only sweet stuff that it goes with. You know, you always want your wine in harmony with your food. Yes. And because it's slightly, this is much drier, but it has a tiny drop of RS, which means residual sugar, I mean about 1%. Of natural sugar? Yeah, natural okay. sugar. But 1%. Nice the goose bay. Yeah, sure. And this is right up your alley, of course, because yeah. it's from your area of the world. My neck of the woods. Yeah. Really, this is my neck of the woods, Larry's side. <laughs> Now, um, but yeah, um, there and you this go. This one I'm actually going to make the brach on because I want to taste it. Okay, <laughs> now, now he's picky right now. with. Amen. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we got that in, CK. Okay, great. This is like, I still like the first one better. Yeah, well, this is drier. Oh. Right. This is so more I'm, serious. I'm a, this drier, is, I'm a drier one. This is more serious. It. You have to drink this with food. That, the first one you could sip all day long on its own. Like this would be good with the starter of the meal with the apples and the honey. Would it? I, I'd say it's go too, with your salmon. Sweet. Your right. yeah, go with your you know, like a, a rich yeah. fish dish. Like, yeah. like your salmon head. Salmon. Like your salmon yeah, head. Your salmon head. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> you laugh, but I'm serious. No, I would even cook. I would even use this to cook with a what they call Poached. a sauce blanche for yeah. for chicken or yeah. for fish. I, I can see this either with fish or a light poultry. Yeah. yeah. Yum! Yeah. That was really. Really good. I, I still like the first one better. Okay, let's move along to our next. Um, we did apples and honey. Do you want to give the little? Uh, so uh, well, you're going to lead the side. I I, I I wanted to show you before we start, just to give you an idea of what you can do. By the way, oh, we're like halfway through the show already, guys. Oh, we got to move it. Okay. Yeah, move um, it, move it. Just to give you an idea of what you can do, you were talking about individual honey dishes. You can make it at home and have your kids decorate them. Um, and it's really cute. Basically, it's just a little tea light holder, and you can just. This is not. Heavy duty arts and crafts. This is easy, easy arts. Oh, that's and crafts. so cute. I'm just going to hold um, this up. Oh, get it says these tati kind, on it. Gets the. We got these materials at Michaels. Any kind of store like that would have something like that. It's a little tea light holder and a little plate. And you know, you get the permanent kind of paint markers. Let the, your your kids decorate. What's the benefit? Number one, like you said, it saves your tablecloth. You don't have honey dripping all over. Uh, and I don't use plastic. Oh, so you put honey in each one of those and each you put it in gets, front of every person? Each person gets that's their own honey dish. That's such a cool idea. And the other thing that's great is that there's no double dipping. Ugh. So my kids can <laughs> get as many palacrubs no. in their honey. I must like have double dipping. Yeah, not like, like a little spit from your family exactly. members. Right. Beautiful. So, so we, we like it in that way. It saves a lot of um, time with passing honey, a lot of mess with honey, and it's and everybody likes it. So we got for a wedding present beautiful honey jars. We got married in Av, so... Um, we got, you know, that's when all the honey dishes started coming out. So we got some honey dishes. And you know what? Thank you to all those people who bought us all those wedding presents 21 years ago. My husband likes the honey bear. <laughs> we pass around. I buy the bear yeah. from Gomeglat and we squeeze our honey on it and we so, pass that around. But um, I like this. So th this or honey th sticks. This honey sticks are also a, a, a cute idea. Um, and you can actually use honey sticks also as a, you could tie it with a ribbon to a place card. Oh, that's oh, cute. That is yeah, cool. cute. That kind of thing. Um, and uh, in, along the same lines as, uh, as what we're about to do with the simanim and the tapas. Yeah, okay, can, yeah, we have to move it along. You can do the same kind of thing. My kids one year did these plates. Each sim siman got a different plate and they decorated them. One was pomegranates. Oh, that's one with cute. Dates. Um, and, you know, and basically I just lined my table with them and put different simanim on. Um, so this is so the if you are one. doing a seder... Cute. It's actually a nice way of displaying yeah. the simanim. It's the cider plate, the kara. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty so much. Right. Okay, okay so, so what have we got next? We did um, the apples and honey. Right, so apples and honey, uh, which is just a, a really nice idea. Um, apples are a significant. They they are likened to the, the smell of the apple orchard is likened to the smell of Gun Aden. That's what they say. The, the, the apples um, are considered to be like a very complete fruit because they mesmerize all the senses smell sight 
touch, taste, um, but they're, but at the same time, they're, um, they're like the mitzvot that we do at the moment, right? So it, it, they're perishable. They're not going to last forever. Whereas the honey, the honey are our entire bee's life's work, right? It takes a long time for a bunny, uh, honeybee to make its honey and many, many, many hundreds and thousands of honeybees to make just a little bit of honey. Right. And so uh, the sweetness of Torah right it can it, you know is represented by by the the sweetness of the honey and the sweetness of a lifetime of all of these accumulated oh. mitzvot so you have your i never heard you, that you, before you have that your thing. you <laughs> have your apples of the moment dipping in your lifetime of sweetness of of torah so it's a it's a nice way to start your that's really nice. your, your seder and that's something you want to hope for right for for the coming year i'm going to watch the show um, I always watch the shows afterwards, you know, one always likes to critique themselves, but just to write all these notes down because this is such repeat a... Repeat at the table, right? right repeat yeah, at the over. table, you know, say you can always watch our shows online afterwards um, on the archives, send it off to a friend, a link, a podcast uh, through the uh, Nachum Siegel Network app. Um, you can download for your iPhone or your Droid and just, you know, sometimes it's great to just sit there and write notes or if you have s children that are the age that, you Always know, great to watch this shows and take notes, yeah, write it down great. before the holiday. Um, um, and just, just a wealth of information. Just Maybe you have the kids uh, not listen to the wine part. But just, <laughs> just an <laughs> alternative idea. Good wine. If, if you are not in, an apple. In good time. I don't know anyone who doesn't like apples dipped in honey, but just in case. And by the way, you can also change it up with lots of different flavored honeys. Right. And every and year we try to some buy Some people are honeys. allergic to apples. Some I, people I are just allergic only to apples. recently heard that. I didn't even know oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yes. My mom was, yeah. Alia Shalom, she was very allergic so to So people yeah. have done mangoes or Asian pears, like different fruits. And Sometimes it's just the apple apples. skins. You know, or, and, or it's and they, unbelievable. They put a lot of pesticides also on apples, so it could be also something they're spraying the apple with that they're allergic you guess to. Guess me the goose base. Um, but, uh, okay, sure. But just, an, just to give you an option in terms of tapas, if you are <laughs> not a big apples and honey person you can inc um, meaning the actual apple dipped with lots of honey you can incorporate that into a nice salad dish you could do like a tart apple salad with a honey dressing right that well, kind of right thing. there you go and some people do c baked apples if they're allergic to raw yes right. yes that's a nice idea okay. also right. so there you have your apples and honey um and you you, you basically say the Yihiraton asking for a, you know a sweet new year okay and, and then we move along move to along to um along the lines of what jay was saying about the play on words with carrots so i always we always did carrots that it was um sure your boots right which is to increase your merits um but there's a different one um about removing the gazar din right, right. so what's the connection which one is it and the answer is that in the gemara it says rubia Right, rubia is many people say black-eyed peas, and um, some people say fenugreek. Right? Yeah, um, but carrots, many people do as as that one, and the reason is because of what Jay said. Because in Yiddish, um, rubia w it means like more, like ro rove, merin, merin. right? So carrot, carrots Ma that's in what Yiddish are say. merin, right? right? So that also means more in Yiddish, though, right? So that for that reason, it became associated with that. Yihiratzon. Um, cool. So um, for carrots, you have a lot of nice options if you're not a big carrot eater. Or, or you, you can do um, carrot muffins. You can do carrot muffins. Simmers? But there's, Simmers. there's, there's no... I love Simmers. So a lot of... Done right. A lot of people... pineapple square. No, so a lot of people don't like it because it's too, like, set, sweet. too, too sweet. But I have to tell you, that's because they never had my grandmother's Simmers. Oh, there you go. You, Is this your you, grandmother you, that I knew you? you? Yes. You remember my grandmother, yeah. Aleha Shalom. She was a phenomenal cook. Naomi's grandmother used to live with her, okay? I think that's such she an incredible was. thing to have all special. the generations together in the house. And like her, that. I grew up eating her Simmers. It was not a side dish. It was really? a main dish. Well, did it have lots of flanken in it? Flanken <gasps> and knedlach that were soaked in knedlach. with that like, sweet broth. Oh. And it was... Coming to your house, this rush is oh, no. so <laughs> good. Can you make it? Do you know how to make it? Oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, can we post great. that just, on your just blog? Just a reminder, everybody get yes, yourself only, a pen. It, it will only be posted as my grandmother oh, paper. told it over. Okay, so the What's yes. for Dinner segment now is sponsored by Gourmet Glatt. Uh, thank you very much to the team at Gourmet Glatt. They happen to sell amazing flanken. Naomi, can you give it us a bit of a rundown on that recipe yeah. as we uh, talk about our what's for dinner so segment? It's, it's not hard. Gormaglat. It's not hard. Just take some time, though. Um, okay, like all good recipes, like, like all the old time recipes. Yeah. Right? yeah. And basically, you bring slow, the slow, you, low and slow, oh, low and slow. slow. You brought you would bring the flank into um, like to a simmer to bring the scum to the top, basically. Yeah, in, in, I like, heard that from you. 
and you're boiling it. Yeah, you're boiling it with water to cover. You skim off the impurities, basically. Yeah. And then you add in all the... Um, we, it, it, my grandmother was a Galiziana, right? So okay. bas- basically, it was um, from that region, it was carrots, sweet potatoes. She would never put prunes in. That was too sweet. Hmm, okay? I don't remember what. So, um, so she would add the carrots and the sweet potatoes, brown sugar, honey, lots of it, salt, pepper, and an onion. Oh. Okay. Prunes are too sweet, but the honey and the sugar, that's okay. <laughs> and the honey and the... And, and when she would put sugar, it... Sugar, that's okay. No, no, it was, it was still sweet. It was still really, really sweet, but, but not like... Okay. Like, you could palate it. You I could hear palate it. it. So, um, I don't like overly sweet. So um, she would let that um, cook down for... You know, partially covered for, like, about an hour. Then she would add in knedelach to the top. Okay? Knedelach, like, you would make um, matzo balls. Uh-huh. But because they end up being like a dumpling because they end up sitting on the top, soaking in all the, the I juices. I never heard no, of But these are already cooked, Nadelach, or they cook in well, the... Well, they cook into they, it, sorry. and you you cover it again and let them cook in. Right. And uh, it reduces any, it down any, a little bit. Any matzo ball recipe that you make, I use actually from uh, Kosher Palette, one of Susie Fishbine's matzo ball recipes. Okay. Even my grandmother liked it, so thank you, Susie. My grandmother's a big time, I actu- was a big I, time I, cook. I actually like the straights recipe. I oh, really? really? I love hilarious. the straights recipe. <laughs> so um, you make yeah. your matzo balls, you put it in with the carrots, sweet potatoes, yeah. everything flank and, and just let it all boil down. How yeah. long should the, and the pot should be about this high, right? It's not one a big soup pot like that. Depends on what you're making. Okay, so family yeah. of six or... You know, so uh, as a for, side for, dish for for for, for us because it was with the meat and everything. I was using a big pot actually, but so interesting. about you could use but a I'd regular soup halfway pot. Full or yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. So it's kind of like a soup. It, it's, it's a, a bit l- soupy. It's a little soupy, but and then but, dr- it's, but you want it's it's soaked up with a matzo ball. You want it to reduce down like that this. it becomes like a saucy, soupy, saucy, saucy. Kind of sauce. Saucy. Saucy. Yeah. I like that. Okay, so thank you for um, sharing. You know, I, Naomi nice. and I were discussing recipes before because should I do one of the recipes? Are you doing it? How does it work? I'm like, Naomi, you will know when it's the <laughs> time for the What's for Dinner segment on Table for Two uh, right now. And uh, so just, that, I'm going to. That's, just gonna, that's gonna, your carrots. I'm just. Okay, so I'm just going to take a word, a minute um, to diverge about cold foods, meats, because they yep. have these incredible meats and we're talking about a meat recipe. Go for it. Okay, so um, so Cold Foods, spelled K-O-L, Cold Foods puts glant kosher meat and ethics on the same plate. Cold Foods makes sure its meat is with harmony, nature, neighbors, is in, sorry, is in harmony with nature, neighbors, and tradition. All the way from farm to fork. Their beef and lamb are 100% grass finished and grass fed all the way from farm to fork. Okay, did I mess that up? <laughs> all the way from farm to fork. Their beef and lamb are 100% Grass fed and grass finished, all the and none of their animals are injected with hormones. Okay, I think that I got that out right. I'm really sorry. Okay, um, and the results are both humane and delicious, and I'm really a big fan of this lamb chops, and I think that's a great meal mm. to ha- also have on uh, Rosh Hashanah. So you can order the uh, lamb chops from uh, Cold Foods, and they actually have a coupon code. Uh, on their website, coldfoods.com. So you order uh, it directly from the website? You order it di- directly from the website, and the coupon code is Naomi. Very excited. Thank you to be, for give me a, to be making me a coupon code. Uh, you get 5% off through your orders through September 22nd, and you will have amazing grass-fed meat. And you can find more information about what I'm talking about, this high-end delicious food that's respected all the way through from meeting all the way to the farmers all the way to you. It's really natural. Uh, go to coldfoods.com. I don't know if you've ever had grass-fed meat. I'm sure I, you have. I have. Um, Argentina does some really great right, work. Right, I've been there many times. Australia also. Yeah, you yeah. travel Australia a lot to too. South America. In fact, I just yesterday I just came back from Chicago and did a whole wine stick there about Israeli wines and uh, – the, the world is discovering it. This was to a non-Jewish crowd. Yeah. Not, the wine or the co- co- grass-fed? No, the wine. Oh, but okay. <laughs> no, it wine? just goes along with the no, traveling ju- thing. And, and the high-end, you know, high-end wine. We were talking about this. In general, people, one of the big trends in the Jewish community at large is that people are ready, willing, and able to spend more money if they are getting a better product. Whether, oh, absolutely. You know. Whether it's your wines or your... Or, or, or grass-fed and... You know, specialty. You know, non hormone. Right. You know, they. Really We're getting healthier, pasteurized chickens. Chickens that aren't cooped up. Che- chickens that are walking around and healthy. Check, check out the article that is in Jewish Action. I just wrote an oh, article. Yeah. I quoted Jay in the article. It's oh, on there you healthy go. healthy food trends. This um, this uh, fall issue of Jewish Action magazine from the OU. 
and it just came out. It just like came out. Week, I'm actually got like it a week ago. Yeah, I've got it packed. And <laughs> and and I wrote an article covering all these healthy food trends. And for sure, what what Jay said is right on. If people are willing um, to have that as a priority, to you know, to have quality, then then they're that that's goes hands in hand with all of these yeah just trends. in general and the high quality ones let's go on to our next siman okay um and jay you're going to open up some wine now we're going to move on to our next do you want to go on to the next one are you ready for us <laughs> jay's deciding what to use oh okay. well, while, while you're getting it okay while, while, while oh you bought it. that in before i love that no one. no but this is this is i bought this in before it's called legend yeah but this is called legend two so it's a different blend and this is more with richer kind of meats and so this would go uh, well maybe with the flunk and that we were talking about because exactly. it's a rich so if, you know if you wanted to talk about mains then i'm going to skip over to one of the other um okay but i want to touch quickly on all the simanins no, no, so. i'm going to skip over to one of the other ones just because of the recipe i have in mind oh okay there you go what to use. so um if you want to talk about dates Dates are an important siman. They're I also one of the Shibat Haminim. Very good. I and I actually did last week. Last week's recipe was uh, your... Date um, muffins. Date muffins. Yeah, I do a whole little mini Which, which if you're not a date lover, is a great way of incorporating dates. Right, and it's fiber in the diet. <laughs> I mean, there's also sugar and oil and eggs um, and all but, that. But yeah. just to give it a little bit of a spin, um, you can use dates also with savory cooking as well. So, um, so I actually make for... Uh, for Rosh Hashanah, I make a uh, top of the rib, or or you can do it with brisket also, with dates and silan, which is the date honey, right? So y that changes the flavor once you cook it. So if you're not a date lover, that's a great way of incorporating it in. Um, I like that idea. And a wine like this, which is, you know, a, a, a darker, deeper, full-bodied kind of wine would go really well with something like that. Uh, the dates, um, what... It's Goodness. it's tamu sonenu, right? That basically we're asking for our enemies to be consumed. Um, it's a play on the word tamar, tamu tamar. It sounds like the the same kind of thing. So basically, yeah. we ask for God to consume our enemies. Which at this point in in time, I think we could definitely use that help get rid of all of our enemies. Oh, absolutely! I'm just gonna hold that up. Just and you know it's great because uh, this first of all we we talked about this on uh, Nachum Siegel's morning show a couple weeks ago so important to support Eretz right now oh, absolutely. buying their products there's a whole new there's a whole big fair going on in the right. five towns that's right the shook the shook right or did went on and uh, or did it go when when is it happening I'm not I think, sure I think they had a few different dates around the tri-state area I'm getting actually. posts on Facebook from everywhere I've absolutely completely lost track if it's so this, this week made, next week this last is week Shiloh was made in Shiloh which is where Avram first sacrificed correct yeah Baruch Hu, and and it, it's made it, Amichai Luria, who was a wonderful winemaker, it's so rich. Did you taste this? this? Uh, like, you know what I like about it's, this? That would be great with me. The smell yeah. is incredible. Incredible. Yeah. So rich. You can actually like really, mm, I'm putting my nose. A little bit of like caramelly tones actually. Yeah. Mm. Which, which Good would go for you that you can taste that. Creaminess to it. Yeah. Well, it would actually go well with dates because especially if you use like what you used with the muffins last week, the medjool dates are. I love medjool dates. Medjool dates are like basically like a caramel yeah you know kind of thing it, when you take a bite of, of a medjool date and it's all caramel flavors um so date muffins or even a, a a date bar like a crumb some kind of a orange date bar kind of thing with an oat topping it all picks up those caramel kind of flavors and if you do it with meats this would be perfect with it because it, it adds the, like a totally unique uh, flavor to whatever I, I love that I love that okay so what's next on our list okay so next on our list is um I'm Car trying to multitask us all here. You'll see me. I'm Car busy a little bit. Car -C. Car -C. Conducting. Uh, Carsey? Yeah. Uh, or Car-T. Or, or car -T car -T. If you're, if you're yeah, I'm, I'm kind of Ashkenazic slash. Um, yeah. Right. So if you have a uh, first Svartic pronunciation, it would be, uh, be Car-T, which is she car tu sonenu. Which is another are, play. Are, uh, another play on words that our enemy should be decimated, which again, please God, uh, you know, we, we'd like to see that. Uh, yeah, we had a rough summer. So, so, some, some protection would be great. Um, but across the world, we need... This. No, I don't listen to the news anymore. I know. I actually stopped. I, I know. really. I can't. So, I can't. Uh, so, so cabbage is one 
One, cabbage. Cabbage is one. Uh, oh, what but leeks. 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 leeks okay. Also, so I make my used. potato leek soup for this, and I put in little shot glasses for everyone. And you can even do oh, if, shooters. If, if, shooters. If you want to love it. If you yeah. wanted to and it's cold shooters. or is it hot? Um, I do it like room temperature. If right. you wanted to do that, you could do it with a few of the simanum. You could do um, the carrot. You could do as a um, ginger carrot one, and then have right next to a little shooter. Um, you know the you the could do it. Leak. You know that, you that's, do a, beetroot that's a great soup. Borscht. No, the borscht. thing. You know that's the shooter saying. thing. Yeah, right. Really and you could do idea. borscht for beetroot soup. Is yeah. you could do just the simanim is <laughs> drink of simanim date, date. <laughs> <laughs> date soup. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, cool. I like that yeah. one. So um, I mean, if you wanted to do with cabbage, so I make lots of slaws for tapas. <gasps> but I um, we, Jay and I love coleslaws. Uh, we always talk about. Do you remember that we happens, talked about yes, it? It happens yes, to be yes. also Thai. Nobody Thai makes better coleslaw than Brenda. Can you send some in? Okay. Next time you come. You got it. I love Kim coleslaw. Kimchi is, is a fermented kimchi. cabbage. Kimchi, right. That's, that's right. Korean. Ta- uh, Korean. Korean. Right. Right. It's Korean. And that's like actually. Pickled, uh, it's pickled. Kinda, Anything right. pickled is actually great for you in terms of probiotics because it's fermented. So if you're hot, that's great for digestion. Um, yeah, wine is too. So let's, let me know. tell <laughs> Bring on the wine. Um, I, I, yeah, there's fermenting is another big food trend. That's yes, getting, for, putting for, the for healthy sure. bacteria. Okay. So that's your cabbage. Siman and Jay, you're going to pour our next wine. Um, now, Do not, we have? We have 30 bottles. No, just, just checking. The next, the next one is beets. Uh, silka it would be the Aramaic uh, because it's a play on words. Like she, 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 she is tell ku oivenu, that our enemies should be removed, our adversaries should be removed um, from the Aramaic silka. So um, beets, I don't know if anybody else from my, from my generation, I've met plenty of people who have very bad beet associations. And so, so did I till I went yes. to some restaurant because called Hadar in Brooklyn be- and they had beet and goat cheese salad. And then you were turned around And forever. then I'm like, I love beets. Yes. So I make beet hummus as my... As my um, beets are have so many delicious natural simon. sugars. Be, I mean, it's just a, so, such a flavorful, flavorful root. So much with it. Yeah, I love it. And it's terrible that the old time packaged borscht gave it a really bad rap. Yeah, but, which it um, shouldn't be because beets and goat cheese fantastic. is great. But so beets we have to think flashic. What I do um, is I roast a bunch of beets, and I feel like I have a blank canvas of what to do with it. Right. With, with it. them from that mm. point on. So I, I was. You can even buy. Salad. You, can, you can even buy peeled and boiled yes. at Costco. Yes, they have prepared ones. Um, which is fantastic, and yep. I throw that in. I'll actually post that recipe, my my beet hummus recipe. Beet hummus. I'll put that on my um my website, theaussiegourmet.com, because I think it's um. It was, it's really yummy, and, and it's one, you know, it, it, so I, I put just, as, as one I, of my I would just like to add, as a practical tip, um, I think that part of the yihi raton of, of um, our adversaries being removed also can apply to the stains from the beet juices dripping <laughs> all over your hands. <laughs> should be Ma- removed. They should be removed, too. I always wear gloves when I'm dealing with yeah, yeah, yeah. and aprons. Yeah, yes. you'll, you'll make the your, apron. Yeah, your, you'll your wear apron. the uh, right. table for two apron. That's right. Okay, Jay, let's let's well, we hear have from a brand Jay. new what group of here? wines from Barkhan called Special Reserve. Okay. I like when you say Special Reserve. Yeah, special it makes Reserve, our show it's $25 special. approximately oh, retail. That's, not, so it's that's not a very nice like price for a nice wine. Gift. But that's a nice what's gift. What's interesting about this wine and wine specifically this category is that the winemaker is involved from the growing of the grapes. So they actually tell the agronomists the growers exactly how they want it grown Mm -hmm. keeping in mind what the end product is going to be sometimes three years beforehand wow so they're involved in the entire process from the growing of the grapes until the final bottling and it's called barkhan special reserve winemaker's choice it's a special reserve that's a cab and you can just yes this is a hundred percent i like when people say cab sav (laughs) cabernet into your existing cup no i've tossed them i've tossed them here you go here's some more cups and i I just want to you know there you go if i if i may (laughs) i'm just gonna i I told everybody please get your pen and pencils pen and paper ready i'm just gonna hold this up again to the camera uh zk am am i in the shot okay just want to make sure everyone can see and naomi so I'm going to read off a bunch of wines that uh, are new that I think... Are I worth think, it. We'll give them a shout-out. Yeah, yep. give them a shout-out. Uh, Har Sinai from, uh, from Oregon News. It's a sweet dessert wine. And it, it comes in this beautiful gift box. Oh, yeah. Very beautiful. Nice. Oh, sorry. Very beautiful nice. Yeah, box. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold that up. Okay, for those of you who are watching as well. And it has what we call a tea cork. You know, you have... It's sweet. It's like a port wine, so you could... Uh, Wait, that's not this. Yeah, that... No, that's not this. Oh, okay. No, I'm just going down the list. 
Um, I love those kind of wines. Yeah. So you could, you know, drink it over a several day period. And then you have, of course, um, the red Moscato from Zion. You have Heaven's Dark Chocolate and Nugget. There's four different types. <gasps> caramel toffee. You had me at caramel toffee. That's parv? And that's parv. Wow. Can yeah. Can we open this? And you have classic <laughs> cappuccino <laughs> no, and dark dessert. chocolate and caramel toffee. First, we're going to have the other wines. Then you have, have the dessert. Chardonnay from... Um, from Barkan, the winemaker's special, I mean, the special reserve. You have the Shiraz, which is a special reserve. You have the Cabernet, which is a special reserve, which is the one we're tasting. And then you have a Malbec, first time ever, from Barkan Classics. And that's only about $10 a bottle at the store level. Chateau Hot Candissas. And also, okay, so another wine from uh, Shiloh called Mosaic. I'm just going down the list. Yeah, absolutely. Because Edom people Psagot. Are. And what's interesting about the Edom Psagot. I like the Psagot it's wine. Now, yeah, it's very now much. available in Mavushal. So if you're going to have people at your table that, you know, that are not necessarily, you know, that you're concerned about, ask your local rub because I'm not, but this is Jay's Mavushal, so anybody, anybody <laughs> can Jane handle it. <laughs> then you have the double espresso liqueur. You have the Walder's Vanilla Vodka. <gasps> Walder's Vanilla Vodka. Delicious. Absolutely fabulous. Mount well, Tabor which comes from Mount Tabor in Eretz Yisrael, uh, Adama, All the way back Shira, from the Tanakh. Shiraz. Now, Mount Tabor has been around for about a year, but the Shiraz is brand new. Every one of these wines is brand new. And, and also, a really interesting wine. It's called Butterfly. Oh, that it's looks beautiful. kind of like a, a sweeter version of the Jeunesse. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, this is right up my alley. Exactly. exactly. Oh, beautiful. I'm just going to hold this bottle up. That's actually a beautiful... Um, logo there and then we did the sukkah hill okay sukkah hill liqueur and that's uh it's an estrog liqueur but there's also a besamim liqueur from the same company besamim liqueur what's that what flavor is it that smell like cinnamon cinnamon yeah. um yeah. all yeah. spice all spice cinnamon right so it has that essence to yeah. it nice. Ch uh, cloves and then you have all the fall smell you know how much you love right. this well the, he makes one that's called reserve fumé he, his Sauvignon Blanc, the Goose Bay Sauvignon Blanc is well known, but the Sauvignon Blanc that he's make that called that's called Fumé is the same thing only aged in oak for about a year. So it's a richer, thicker kind of more flavorful, smoky, a little bit Fumé. The word Fumé means smoke, so it's got a little bit of a smokiness yes. to it, which is really wonderful. We had we showed the Namur Rosé, which is right here, and uh, and finally the. Uh, Zuta Amuka Merlot, also from Oregon News. And so those are the wines I brought. There's so many new wines. Go to your local retailer. They'll tell you what's new for Yontif, and you can get them. You know, if you go onto the Royal Wines website, do they? can you punch in a zip code and find out where really. wines are? Not really. We have to have a chat about that. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes certain wine stores, are, you've heard, they've heard about something from our radio show, and they live in South Carolina because we do have listeners from there. They want to find out where the closest stories or something well the, what you can do is you can go to the royal white website send an email saying i live in N north carolina or whatever and they'll tell you and within i usually get them so <laughs> you know <laughs> you're directing people yeah i i can direct director. people yeah absolutely so we can great. tell them exactly yeah, no, I just, near them we're exposing people to these great wines and you know we got to make it accessible now <laughs> yeah, absolutely okay naomi let's move right along you're, while you're, we you're going to give me a good recommendation for fish we had that one um before that you recommended for fish and if you have a second pick that would be great because we're going to do the, the fish fume stand. that i just mentioned yeah the goose bay fume blanc okay which is a really wonderful bottle of wine is great for fish as well and that's that's a semi dry? that's no, a dry. That's completely dry dry white it's completely dry white but a little smokiness to it it's fuller bodied so even though it's dry it's not that crisp acidic dryness which some people love okay. it's more of a round fuller bodied dryness that okay. lots of people even so love more. that that sounds like it would go great with the fish simon and that's i'm sure probably your favorite simon because you're a fish lady um, i'm a fish lady because i write recipes for aussie's fish uh, from right. uh you know they're in many different supermarkets gotta tell you you're gonna go next time you're in chicago go to um shallots okay um what's her name laura, I just, laura frankel she's fantastic. I, and i want to have her on the show she's great yeah but she's not there any, you know she's not there anymore. she's not there anymore no, she hasn't been there for a long time oh but that's okay she, she started she, it she though. started she, she started it and now she's at wolfgang puck's kosher right. catering right she's ahead of that right oh nice but yeah. she, that, that's her. fine yeah. but i want to tell you i had um sea bass chilean sea bass oh yeah dinner. and you know everybody's doing it they do an amazing 
Yeah. May, I wanted to take it home with me. <laughs> Fish like, to go. Really, really Not great. on the plane. They talk about it. You know, they do, and, and a sushi bar. Oh my gosh. It's like a trafe sushi bar. It's like, you know, you can like make believe that you're, <laughs> you know, oh you're my being gosh. naughty, you know. Last week, I, I gave a shout out. You just triggered something. I gave a shout out to all these amazing restaurants that I ate out at. I forgot to mention Butterfish right here in New York, not too far from us on the Lower East That's Side. That's the new, the new prime restaurant. The pri- it's the new yeah. prime restaurant. I had a meal there with um, Esty Berkowitz. Um, Parenting and um, Liz Rubin from Kosher Like Me, and we're invited by the PR department at Butterfish to try their sushis and their Asian fish recipes. They run a great bunch of restaurants. I just trailed with uh, Chef David Kalatkin, who's the amazing. Chef there. And amazing. He, he runs a great, great uh, bunch of restaurants, and and Butterfish is is the newest one. Right, and, and I, that's I, a I feel restaurant? bad. It's actually Flashic Japanese. It was absolutely fabulous, and I feel bad I did not give them a shout out last week. But now they're getting their own little segment now um, from uh, from me because I really enjoyed the meal and I enjoyed the company, and they couldn't do enough for us, which was really nice. But they had things like a, so- a brick, a hot brick, salted. And then they put raw meat on top of it. So you actually cooked the meat. In front of you. In front of you, yourself. Like you've it turned it over yourself on this hot brick. It was really cool. I've never seen that in any restaurant before. So they, I they, do, that was they do a lot of really freshly prepared things that are just fantastic. Um, yeah, the sushi was amazing. They better warn people or not to touch that brick. Spe- I know, they speaking, did. It came speaking, out. Sh- speaking of sushi, that brings us to our next iman. Which oh, is- oh, 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 great. Yeah, because okay. we've got about four minutes okay, left. So f- <laughs> fish is actually one of my favorite simanim also because of the significance of it, which is fan- it, it, there's so much t- with fish especially w- we see it also in Adar for Purim correct uh, because that's, that's the right. you know that's the mazal of that month but for for our purposes here the Hiraton is shenifre vinyar bekadagim that you should be fruitful and mu- multiply it like fish which is in line with the bracha that Yaakov gave um to um to his sons right we say hamalcha gol oti right um that shiyid gula rov, right? Um, that you should multiply like the fish, right? Why? Um, because f- as we all know, fish multiply, in, uh, they swim in schools. It's multitude. Basically, the bracha is for multitude. Um, and we learn a great lesson from the fish because they swim under the surface of the water, supposedly protected from the ayin hara. So, um, and how is that, how is that possible? It's pretty cool. How is yeah. that, how is that, right? how is that possible? Because they're under the surface, meaning they're swimming with humility, right? They understand that that um, the another chill, another chill moment. They're, they're not the chill moment. They're, they're, they're under right they're under the radar, so to speak, and that's exactly how we can prosper from blessing if we can be humble that way, right? So that is actually our little secret, a little lesson to ourselves, in order to gain Hashem's blessing, right? We have to be able to be humble in all of our ways, right? That, and that's the, the biggest lesson we can learn from the fish. Um, that's and, beautiful. And f- I actually have a great spread in this uh, this issue's Joy of Kosher magazine. Yes, we were talking, which is Naomi, did you know your ears were burning? And, and, and sushi. Your ears were burning last week. We actually usually keep a copy of Joy of Kosher floating around here in the studio. But Naomi did an incredible spread uh, last week on... Um, on sushi salad and sushi and, you know, f- as I guess as part of the simanim for Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, there, you know, it was, uh, I think, the Hamish issue for Joy of Kosher. Oh, but I this was it. this was actually a modern twist on sushi salads and, and fish dishes. Because we've moved away from gefilte fish. You do not serve gefilte fish anymore. <laughs> you do sushi. Like kids will eat sushi over gefilte can, fish you any can, day if now. You can get, if you crazy. Can, if you can get a great fresh uh Sushi grade tuna, then you can make a delicious sushi sashimi salad. I uh, like I like the salads these days. With, yeah, you know, no, or or or, rice. Or, yeah. or a sushi salad with rice if you like. But if you are not a raw fish kind of person, which no, I'm not a like, rice person. I like the raw fish. Uh, Leave out. The I rice. know I have many I have many um, clients and students that are not raw fish people and. Um, if you wanted a more modernized version for your gefilte fish, you can do a like an herbed fresh fish cake. There you go. Thing. And where we can find these recipes in Joy of Kosher. Uh, uh, the sushi salads will be in this issues uh, this month's issue of Joy of Kosher, and, and I can post on my website JewishCookingConcepts.com. I will post some recipes for Yanto. Thank you very much, Naomi and Jay, for being here. Just a word from Cole Foods, spelled K O L, puts black kosher meat and ethics on the same plate. Coal Foods makes sure his meat is in harmony with nature, neighbors, and tradition all the way from farm to fork. Their 
beef and lamb are 100% grass fed and grass finished all the way. Uh, and none of their meat animals are injected with hormones. And the results are humane and delicious. And so make sure you try the duck breasts or ribs. Uh, use the coupon code Naomi to receive 5% off the entire store before September 22nd. For more information, go to coalfoods.com. You are listening to Table for Two with Naomi Nachman on the Nachum Siegel Network. Our show is sponsored by Abel's and Hyman. We taste better. We've got music sponsored by our amazing friends at Kedem. Right up until Lech Benching. Jay Booksbaum, I cannot thank you enough for joining me today. Chassiva the Chassima Toiva to everybody. Thank a good you. benched yar, as they said in Williamsburg to this day, and Nargazunt. Amen, amen. And just good health and prosperity to everyone. Naomi, thank you very much for joining us again. Always great to be here. Thank you. And we look forward to more shows together in the upcoming year, all of us together. Amen. ZK, same to you. Good yontif. <laughs> to all our listeners, good yontif. Um, Stay tuned. We've got music right up until Lichbenshing. Shana Tova, everyone, and we'll catch up with you in the new year. Take care. Shabbat Shalom.